Hi everyone, so on today's video we're going to go through the basics of Rhino 7 and we'll be drafting a 2D floor plan. So I just downloaded a floor plan with dimensions off the internet, so not necessarily the best plan, but something that we can use as a start just to copy and um, yeah, kind of use as the basic template for what we're going to draft. So uh, just to dive in, if you haven't already checked out our intro to Rhino 7 interface, I'd recommend you to check that video out. That will kind of give you the lay of the land and kind of share where some of the buttons and navigation, how that works. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of jump into that a little bit in this video, so no need to um, watch that fully if uh, you just want to learn how to draw a floor plan here. So uh, first thing is I'd start a new drawing. So I go to File, New. And the floor plan I have here is metric in meters. So that's pretty much the template that I'm going to look for. So large object meters. Hit open. I'll just wait for that to go. All right, so based on the template, we have four views. Because we're drawing a floor plan, let's just double click into the top view so that will take our full screen. And I want to make sure that project is on. So project basically forces everything to be drawn on the zero plane. So it can make sure that you don't have any floating lines in 3D space, very important here. So make sure that's checked off. And also make sure that Ortho, OSnap, and Smart Track are on. Um, that will allow you to uh, create some of the 90 degree angles here. Make sure that you kind of snap to some of the key points. I like to turn on endpoint, midpoint, intersection. And Smart Track kind of creates alignments between the points and lines that you've already drawn on the board. Okay, and you can switch on Gumball if you like. Uh, for now, I won't uh, dive into that. I don't think we necessarily need it, but I know some people like that function. All right, so I'm just going to click on the Polyline uh, tool here. You can also use the Command Line and, and type Polyline. And I'm just going to start from one side and go to the next. So let's start from 0, 0. So I type in 0, 0, 0, comma, 0. Hit Enter. And then uh, the first measurement I have on the bottom left, let's say, is 5.42 meters. So I'm just going to type that in, 5.42. Enter. And then make sure you click, right? So I've got to click to the right. So that's done. Next, I'll type in 3.73, enter, and then click. So those two lines are done. Then I'm just going to go around the board. So 2.83, enter, click. 2.54, enter, and click. And then 1.73, enter, and I'll click. I don't have this dimension, so I'll just hit enter. And then that closes out of the polyline command. I'm going to click the polyline again, and then I'm going to go from this side. So here, hovering over the 0, 0 where I started, you can see that it snaps to the endpoint. So I'm just going to click on that. Then I'm going to type in 4.14, enter, and then 2.86, enter, 5.55, enter, and then 1.87, enter. And I think that should lead us to the end there. Hit enter. So I now have two lines that should come together. So if you click, hold, and drag from top left to bottom right, and then highlight everything, now I'm going to type join, enter. The so two curves joined into one closed curve. So I can be sure that it all connected and looks good. So that's kind of the basic outline. And you notice these measurements are the outer perimeter. So keep that in mind. Now, next I want to maybe offset 
it doesn't give me the thickness, but let's just say it's uh, 300 millimeters. So that's a 0.3 meters. So I'm going to type in offset, then enter. I'm going to click on the curve. I want to offset. Then the distance, I want to make that 0 0.3, it's 300. And then you can either click outside or inside. In our case, we want to click inside since the dimensions were of the outer shell. So I'm going to click inside. So then now you kind of have these outer walls. So next we have these inner partitions. So let's just, uh, I'm going to close midpoint just to make sure it doesn't cause issues in these areas. So again, I'm going to click on my polyline. I'm going to grab those points going to hover over this point and since because I have smart track on if I kind of carry that over you'll see that uh, have this gray line that kind of carries that measurement across so I can make sure that it's perpendicular so make sure you have perpendicular and intersection on that will help and then also the smart track here so now with that highlighted I can click on that corner and then click over here and then hit enter so that's good next I want to say offset this let's say a wall is 150 millimeters so I can change the distance here to 0.15 and then I'll uh, click on the inside if you really want to be particular you can offset say 75 millimeters on this side 75 on the other side so I can show you for example so offset, I'm going to change the distance to 0 0.075. Then I'm going to click the line. I'm going to, on one side, I'm going to right click to replicate the command. I don't need to change the distance because it remembers. And then I'm going to click on the other side. All right, so now this I can delete. So that will be that interior wall. All right, what's next is, uh, I guess, this line over here. We don't, we don't know the measurement other for, than uh, from here, so it's 2.7 meters. So let's just go by that. So again, polyline, I'm going to grab the end point here. Go 2.7. And then I'm just going to grab this end point here. Click Enter. Then I'm going to offset. Let's do the same measurement, 0.75. I guess in this case, we probably want to keep that straight alignment. So I'm just going to right click and do that again. I'm going to delete that instead. So that's kind of like the basic partition for the bathroom. Um, right now, this is maybe a little offset from there. So we could draw another line that kind of takes that point and hover over the point you want to use as an alignment. Click and then I'm going to zoom in with my mouse, click there, enter, just ensure that that's straight. So I think that's good. Now I want to maybe trim some of these walls, right? So type in trim, select cutting objects. Let's use our perimeter lines first. Let's say those are the cutting objects. Hit enter. So anything in between is now gonna get trimmed. So watch this, it says select object to trim. So I'm going to select this, 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 this. So that's great. Hit enter when we're done. Now I'm going to hit trim again, select cutting objects. I'm going to select all these interior walls. How I want to do that is by clicking from the bottom right corner and then go to the top left corner. Now selecting this way allows you to not require you to um, enclose everything in the box. So now as long as it's touching your selection box from bottom right to top left, then you'll be able to select those lines. Now, 
So select cutting objects. I'm going to press enter when I'm done. Now select object to trim. So I'm going to trim these perimeter walls like this. All right. Enter when you're done. You can actually um, probably delete this segment of the line, but it's all connected. So the thing to uh, to disconnect them all, you can type in explode, enter, and then just select that, and then enter. So now they're all separate segments. If I want to rejoin them together, it's kind of uh, just using that join command. But for now, I'm not really picky about that, so I'm okay. So that's great. Um, you know, before I get too ahead of myself, let me rename this layer. So double click that. I'm going to call it walls. And that's because the next thing I might want to do is look at the doors. You might want to do uh, millwork, window, maybe call it furniture instead. Let's just say we can group millwork into that category as well. So, well, so next we've got to add a couple doors here. So there's one, two, three. Uh, similar thing to before. We'll probably just use the polyline and then trim commands and then offset. So let's just draw some vertical lines. And then I'm going to zoom in. Right click to redo that command. And then I'm going to make sure that's perpendicular. Click and then enter. So that's where we'll start. Let's type in offset. Let's make sure that it stay 100 or 0.1 meters off that wall. Usually you have a bit of trim by the windows, so let's make the distance 0.1. Click those lines, right click, click that again, right click, then click that again. So now we can delete all those original lines. And then a door opening, let's say uh, it's about, you know, 36 inches or so. So we'll say offset uh, distance. Let's change that to 0.9. And then we'll click that and then offset. Oh, right click. Okay, right click. Oh. Make sure that you select the line, then right click, and then offset. So there you go. Those will be the openings, still using the walls layer. And then now you want to select all the lines, then type in trim, and then you can trim that all the way. Hit escape, and then you should be good. So you kind of have the basic outline there. Last thing you might want to do is the windows. Um, we haven't gotten any measurements here, so we might just kind of roughly draw them out again. Um, so I'm just going to hit move, enter, move that by, let's say 0.5, enter. And then, not sure how big that window, let's say offset by 1.5. Good. Show you another command. Let's say this window is equivalent to the one down here. So if we select these two lines, type in mirror. Want to mirror it across this, the middle point here. So let's ch check off middle in your O snaps. So that will snap you to the middle here. And then if you kind of pretend like this is the mirror line, you can see it's kind of showing you how it will mirror across. So I'll just click anywhere along that plane. And then it just mirrors those two lines. So that's good. 
And then maybe I'll just select these two lines, type copy, then I'll just draw this across. Again, if we got some measurements of these windows, we could be a bit more specific, but for now, we're just trying to show the main idea. Next, I'll draw these two windows, click that down, enter, type in move. I'll move this by 0.5, and then click. Then I'll offset this by again 1.5, and then let's select these two lines. I'll just copy it and move this across. Maybe I'll move it a little bit more, so it's a bit more balanced. I think that looks pretty good. No windows here, um, just like the door. So I think that's good. Next, we'll want to trim. Oh, actually, there's a sliding door, so let me just copy this. 0.5. And then let's just say this is offset by 1.5 as well. So this will be a door, sliding door in the middle. And then we got two windows on that side. So let's select all those lines. And then we're going to type in trim. Then we can trim each of these in the pieces. Then hit. Uh, enter to so you're done you have everything selected at this point i would like to join everything so i type join enter and then you have now seven closed curves so you can see with this that's one this is one this is one this kind of cleans things up all right next you want to draw in your doors so um I like to draw my doors a little bit differently. So for example, I'll draw, we know the door is 0.9, so draw a polyline, 0.9. Escape, oh, draw that again. Take the midpoint, 0.9, enter. And then I'll hit enter. Next I'll draw a circle take that line, so that's the center point, and then that's the end point. Now we need to trim this. So sometimes I just like to draw a line up here, across. So I can click both of these lines. I press uh, shift and I hold it, and I can collect uh, two objects, kind of select both of them. Then now I type in trim, I trim this outer piece, so that's good. Uh, hit enter to get out of that. If I hit escape, now with this extra line, I can delete that. Now I can select both of these, type in join, and then it's just one open curve. And I can just copy this. Um, I'll copy this here. I'll copy this here. Hit escape, then I'll rotate these doors. The way to rotate, you click the corner that you want to rotate, then I'll choose where I want to start and then where I want to end the rotation. So this one, I might have to mirror, so if I type in rotate, so I want to rotate off this line here and then click here. I'll need to flip this, so I'll use the mirror command. I want to mirror it along this plane, so I'll click that and then click that. And then now I can delete this. So there I have the doors. Next, I want to draw some windows, so if you want to check that off, that makes this the active layer. And then I'll Click on this rectangle tool, trying to just go corner to corner. Right click to repeat the command. And then I'll just kind of go on my way. It's pretty quick actually. And then I'll just draw a line down the middle to indicate that it's a window. If 
right click. So you can right click to end the command and then right click again to repeat the previous command. Right click, going around. I'm using a mouse with a scroll wheel, so that's always helpful. All right, so there you go. That's your Windows. If you ever want to change, like for example, if you drew on the wrong layer, you want to change the layer, you can go to this pi command here, click on that bottom arrow, Click and hold, and it'll show you more commands available. And you can hover over to see what it means. So this second from the left, this says change object layer. So left click that. You'll notice it's called change layer, the command. And then you can choose which layer to change it to. So for example, if I meant for that to be on the window layer, I can change it. You can see it's blue now. If I click on this and click on the change layer, can go make it back to the doors layer. The reason why we want different layers is sometimes you want to, you know, toggle a visibility. So that allows you to do that. So next we'll have, uh, we'll draw in some furniture. So if I'll double click that layer. Draw the countertop. So, one easy way is just clicking on that. Maybe it goes to the midpoint here. Enter. I like to offset this. Um, usually, a counter is about 24 inches. So, that's about 600 millimeters. So, I'll do 0.6. And then I can just hit enter. I'll just close that loop. Enter. And then I'll select all these lines and join. Then you can go into the details of drawing a sink and the stove, adding some furniture, um, and some of the bathroom elements as well. But uh, yeah, that's kind of like the basics of it. Um, if you want to follow along further, um, you can kind of continue with this drawing and kind of keep it along, but it's essentially using the same commands. You'll be using the polyline. We've introduced you to offset, trim, rotate, some of the basic 2D commands. And as always, make sure that you have your O snaps on and off as needed. And you can always switch off ortho if you are drawing anything that isn't 90 degrees. But I find for a basic floor plan, it's usually pretty helpful. All right, if you got some value out of this video, please let me know through the comments and please like this video. And if you want to follow us, please subscribe for future videos on Rhino. All right, thanks everyone.